always know what I'm looking for when I travel. I get to a city, check into a hotel or Airbnb, or if I'm lucky, something that's neither. Next step, I look for something to eat, preferably cheap, preferably local, coffee, depending on the time. I need to know exactly how challenging getting a decent espresso is going to be. But I do very little research beforehand. Not for some clean slate, unbiased philosophical reason, but because I'm just too busy. I'd ask CNN for help, but their travel people are still searching for Italy with Stanley Tucci. Hint, it's right there. It isn't really until this moment, when I open the sometimes hours of footage, watch every single frame, and ask myself, What the f is this video about? Eventually, by the time you see my name get scribbled on the screen, I have an idea. Except this time. All I know is that this is the old port of Marseille, one of the oldest in Europe, France's second largest city, and what some call the most dangerous city in Europe. Ooh, I got it. Let's find out how dangerous Marseille really is. First full day in Marseille, it is hot. Not just hotter than it was in Paris, but a lot more uh, humidity as well. So uh, walking is just gonna be nice and slow and leisurely um, for as long as possible. Um, oh, what did I just, I just stepped in gum. Oh, dang it. This is the glamorous part of travel vlogging that you don't often get to see. Okay, so while I'm taking care of that, let's put Marseille's crime into perspective. According to my extensive research, which involved Googling crime rates by city, then clicking on the very first link, Marseille actually has the second highest crime rate in Europe. The first goes to Bradford, England. Okay, I think we're ready. How many other vloggers use their precious watch time minutes to s scrape their foot on the side of a curb to get rid of gum. It's actually a Saturday. I think actually Monday is a holiday, like most Saturdays. Wake up at a leisurely time, sleep in a little bit. Don't really know much about the city. Don't really know what the food vibe is or what the situation is here with coffee, brunch, and these types of things, but we're about to find out, so. We're going to brunch. We just had a coffee here at Deep Coffee Roasters, which is fantastic, by the way. Probably one of the better coffees I've had in all of France. Um, Today was supposed to be a beach day. We were supposed to be headed to the beach club for one o'clock. It's 12.30 now. But there's sort of this like menacing threat of thunderstorms in the area all day. So I don't know if that's gonna happen. So one, that's great because half the country seems to be on fire with forest fires. So any rain in the region, good job. Um, and two, I need to change my reservation at the beach club. So. Here goes me trying to speak French. That didn't go so well last time. But after a few weeks, I was feeling much better about my Francais. Bonjour, uh, j'ai une réservation pour aujourd'hui à 13h. Uh, C'est possible uh, changer à demain. Uh, uh, will. Uh, uh, Demain à, à, à 10 heures, c'est possible? Ok, parfait. Merci beaucoup. À, à demain. Merci beaucoup. All right, how'd that go? I think that went pretty well. <laughs> All of it, if you speak French, let me know if my grammar was good. It's probably terrible. Um, but let me know in the comments if that was even remotely close. I seem to under get the task accomplished. Um, but, uh, you know. They probably are used to broken French.
After the rain cleared, there were only two things on the agenda. Get something to eat and find a place to watch Olympique Marseille, the local football club, play. So uh, Marseille is proving to be a perfect example of why all of France is not Paris. It doesn't have the refined beauty of Paris. Definitely has much more of a Middle Eastern influence, North African influence. And uh, that's definitely like the vibe that you get out here in some of these streets in Marseille, which I'm here for. And it's also a game night. Marseille is playing Brest tonight in the French Ligue 1. One thing I'll say about like, and I catch myself doing it, I think I just did it, is using words like gritty or refined when it comes to Paris as opposed to the grittiness of Marseille. And I feel like sometimes those words can become synonymous with some like subtle racial signaling. Like because there's less white people here, it's grittier. And what I'm trying to get across here is there is a North African, Arabic, Middle Eastern influence here. It's noticeable. And uh, I'm sure, and history, and history explains why with the uh, rule of the Ottoman Empire and uh, obviously the proximity to North Africa just across the Mediterranean Sea. I think like whatever you want to call it, gritty, rough around the edges, a little bit dirty, whatever it is, I think it's just important to remember that that's probably where you're gonna find the most flavorful food. Ultimately, it's just like, I'm just worried that like, don't interpret me saying things like gritty as a code for dangerous. And maybe you want that, but I don't feel as though I'm in any danger whatsoever. You know, it's just what it is. French, France had a lot of colonies in North Africa. This part of the world was once ruled by the Ottoman Empire. Hence, there's gonna be a lot of influence uh, from that part of the world in this part of the world. With clear skies and another scorching hot day forecast, there was no better place to be than Plage de Prado for a beach day. Oof, bad angle. Don't. Can't record like that. <laughs> gotta, gotta sit up. So uh, I'm at the La Roumerie Beach Club um, at, I think, Prado, Plage del Prado or Prado Beach um, in Marseille. And, uh, oh God, I just love the Mediterranean. Turquoise water, warm. Um, the beaches are never really as sandy as you would like them to be at least in a lot of places that I've been to so far, but it's good. It's a beautiful, hot day. And we're doing the private beach. Um, it's just, it's definitely more expensive to, you know, have a, have a seat at a private beach, but you get a chair, you get, a, you get an umbrella, you can order food. You really don't have to bring anything. And seeing as how we don't live here and don't have stuff, if you can spare the euros, it's definitely the way to go. This being France, there is a, uh, how shall I put this? Uh, there's nipples behave accordingly. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, but, uh, but they be out here. So, yeah, just so you know.
Maybe when people talk about the dangers of this city, what they're talking about is the dangerous amount of sugar intake. Be sure to monitor your blood sugar levels accordingly. Um, there was a guy here the other day who was selling candied peanuts. I'm trying to find him again because they were so good. I think, I think. Is that him? I think I found him. Bonjour. These little things right here. So good. They're still hot. I think that concludes this day in Marseille. Headed back to the hotel now. Sleepy, sleepy time. Do it again tomorrow. My time in Marseille was almost over, but I had heard about this neighborhood with tons of street art called Le Panier. So before I left, I decided to take a stroll through. Today's a holiday in France. I think actually Monday is a holiday. It's a holiday. It's a holiday. It's a holiday. Known as the Assumption of Mary, which means it being a very religious holiday, there's a apparently a procession that goes through this neighborhood. So uh, I'm gonna try to catch it. It sounds like I'm getting closer. The Assumption of Mary the belief that Mary, mother of Jesus, couldn't have died. So in 1950, Pope Pius XII just assumed that Mary's assumption into heaven was a thing. The declaration made August 15th a national holiday here in France. In Marseille, the occasion is marked with a procession around Le Panier. I struggle with these videos sometimes because I'm not really the like give you tips and give you places to go type of guy. Um, I like to sort of just have you experience this city and this time with me. Yeah, Marseille is a great city with a lot of vibe. Some of the friendliest people that I've ever met in France have been here in Marseille. Um, everybody is very welcoming, wanting to know where you're from, um, helping, you know, communicating with you as best they can. English is not as strong generally in Marseille as it is in Paris, um, but I think I think you can probably get by, and everybody's just willing to sort of help you out and make sure um, you get what you need and you go where you need to go. Marseille is not dangerous at all no more or less dangerous than anywhere else you've been to. So if you're considering coming to Marseille and you happen upon a headline like this, just consider it what the French call merde. 